guys. So here we have it. Uh, we're starting off with a third person template in Unreal Engine 5. Obviously, we're going to make a 2.5D game. So we need to change the camera angle. But first, we have a lot of um, uh, static meshes in here that we don't need. So if we go to our outliner, this is a list of everything that's in our in our world, in our editor. Yeah, um, we're going to delete some. So let's go all the way down to here and delete all that and we want to get rid of these walls so shift click to select them press delete um, and then we'll get rid of these cubes as well and we'll get rid of the ramp all right so with that being done now what we're going to do is we're going to change we'll get rid of this as well we want to change the size of the floor so click on the floor go to details and it's going to be the y-axis um, and we're going to scale that to a 10 like so and if I just go in here you can see the player start which is self-explanatory this is where the player starts in the game we'll move it up to here I'll press play and you'll see that we're still you know we can move wherever we want the cameras moving around it's not it's not set up yet okay so what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the camera to make it more of a side scroller aspect all right so press escape Open up the character blueprint, which is in blueprints, and then you'll see uh, BP underscore third person character. And in here, you've got the viewport. We'll start with that. So, on the left hand side, you'll see camera boom. Click on camera boom, and it's this red line that attaches the camera to the player. Now, we want to rotate that. So, we want to rotate it, and I go like that. You see, nothing's moving, okay? I'm just going to hit Control Z to undo that. I'm going to go over to the right hand side. So in order to move the camera boom, you need to go to camera settings and untick use pawn control rotation. Okay, and just untick all of these, inherit pitch, and inherit yawn, inherit roll. And now we can move it into a 90 degree angle. We can mess around with the values later, but this will do for now. Um, scroll down again where it says lag, enable camera lag, and then change the value to 7. I find it's a good sweet spot. Press compile. And now when we go to press play, their camera should be in the right place, like so. But when I press W, I'm moving to the right. If I press D, I'm moving towards. So the movement's still not set up yet, okay? So let's fix that. Press escape. Let's go back to the third person character blueprint and go to the event graph this time. And you'll see camera input. We don't need any of that. Select it all, delete. Then for movement input, we need to make some adjustments, okay? So... Let's see if I can zoom in here, make that bigger for us. Yeah. So get right factor, we're going to replace that with the uh, get forward factor. So delete control rotation and delete this add movement input. Alt click on these to delete them faster. So tidy it up. And we'll move get forward vector over here. We'll join the X up to the X, the Z up to the Z, and the return value up to world direction. Now if I'm going too fast, just it's going to be on YouTube, so just um, well, obviously you're watching it on YouTube, <laughs> but just uh, change the speed, okay? I am Irish as well; we talk pretty fast anyway. But yeah, so now that's done. Press compile. Let's go test it out. All right, so I'm going to press the D key. Look, I'm moving to the right. I press A and moving to the left, left, right, left, right, and we can jump as well. And we're staying in the same line, okay? The jump's pretty small though, you know for side scrollers especially in platformers the uh, player can jump a lot higher and that's really easy to fix so press escape back into the character blueprint go back to the viewport scroll down in the components select character movement on the on and then go to the right hand side where it says details scroll down and it's going to say character movement jumping falling the jump c velocity is 700 i'm going to change this to a thousand for now we can play around with this if we need to all right, but for now, this is a good little number for the jump. Press compile, minimize the screen, press play, and you'll see the jumps much higher in the game, which is something that we're going to need, I believe. So that's it. We've now set up our 2.5D side scroll character for now. We can tweak this towards the end of the series. Um, but yeah, what we're going to do now is... <clears throat> We're going to jump in and we're going to create a health bar and make it functional, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to um, 
go to content, right click, create a new folder, and we'll call this UI. Yeah, like so, so for user interface. Um, and what we also need to do is we need to go back to our third person character blueprint. And we need to create a variable. So for anyone that doesn't know, variables is how you store data within the engine. Um, and there's all different types of variables. We'll look at a few different ones throughout this series and I'll explain as we go along. So this um, variable is going to be called player health. Press enter and it's set to a Boolean. A Boolean is a true or false value, which we'll use later, but we don't want it to be. We want this to be a float, which is a number with decimal points. Once you've selected float, press compile and then a default value will appear in the details panel. Change this to one, and then we'll have to press compile again. And then what we'll do is we'll go back to our UI folder, and we'll right click, we'll scroll down where it says user interface, we'll create a widget blueprint, and we'll select user widget. And we'll call this HUD for heads up display. And then we'll double click to open it up like so. <clears throat> and this is our designer, okay? So UI is its own avenue, own area in, um, within game development and game design, okay? For this tutorial series, I'm going to keep it very basic. If you wanted to go ahead at the end and add in your own buttons that maybe you've made on Photoshop or whatever, feel free to do so, okay? But what we'll do is we'll go to the palette, we'll type in canvas panel, and we'll drag it over into the designer and you'll get a green rectangle like so. And then back into our search palette. Well, we don't even need to search. It's right there. Progress bar. Bring it in. I'm going to adjust mine like so. You can adjust yours whatever way you want. That's how I'm doing my health bar. Okay. Now, this little thing that looks like a flower is actually called an anchor. Okay. And it determines where your object's going to be placed on screen. So imagine the canvas panel is your screen. This is your progress bar. And we want to position it to where I have it. So you just drag it out and make sure it fits over where you want it to be. Like so. Um, let me just tidy that up a little tiny bit. That will do. And then over on the right hand side, you'll see where it says progress. If you just hover over and fill it up, you'll see the bar fills up left to right. Um, but we want to change the color because blue isn't really ideal. So down here it says appearance, fill color and opacity. Click on blue, go to where it says green, press OK. Then go back up to progress. Now make sure this next part is under progress next to percent where it says binding. We're going to create a binding. And what that means is we're going to bind our health variable to this progress bar. Okay, so create some space like I've done here. Drag off the execution pin, type in third person. So cast to BP underscore third person character. The object is get player character. If I could spell properly, my Mars bar fingers, like so. Then drag off the blue pin, type in get player health and join the green up to the return value. So this basically has now linked our health value, health variable, sorry, to the, um, it's binded now to our progress bar, okay? So once we click compile, we now need, it's still not on our screen. So I'll press stop, we need to add it to our viewport. And in order to do that, we do it in the level blueprint. So up here, it says, this is, uh, you can open up your level blueprint and we're going to give it some very, very, very basic scripting. So right click, type in event, begin play, drag off, type in create widgets and under the class, you want to select HUD because we just created it and then off return value, type in add to viewport. <clears throat> now, basically what we've done here is very, very basic then begin play. So when the game starts, we want to show our widget, which is the HUD, and we want to add it to the viewport so we can see it. Press compile, minimize it, press play, and you now have a green health bar, which is full. All right, like so. But we don't know if it's working or yet. We need to test it out by damaging the player. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to look at how to create an actor and damage the player, which is really easy to do. Let's go. So press escape, back into our um, content. I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a blueprint class and I'm going to select an actor. It even tells you here an actor is an object that can be placed or spawned in the world. So select actor. We'll call this damage underscore test. 
you'll have to use an underscore or hyphen or something because uh, you can't put spaces in Unreal Engine for any of this. Press enter. We'll double click to open this up. And in the left hand side in components, we'll press add and we'll add a we'll add a particle system. There's two, there's, there's, uh, two different particle systems, uh, Niagara and Cascade. We're going to use Cascade. We're going to call this fire, like so. And it, with the starter content, there is fire already there. It's just um, preparing the shaders. It will show up in a second, like so. Okay, so it's still preparing there. It's a little bit slow, but that's fine. We'll just move on. Okay, cool. Right, so we'll press add and we'll add a box collision. Like so, just keep the name box, it's fine. With that selected, on the details panel, scroll down. The collision preset should say overlap all dynamic, like so. That means that anything that's moving moves through the box and it will get affected. Okay, so we can move through it, all right? Um, scroll down a little further to events. On component begin overlap, press the plus symbol. And let's set it up so we can damage our player. So from the other actor, we want to cast a third person character. And then we want to get player health. And we want to drag off the blue again and type in set player health, like so. And we'll join these up. And then from the get player health, we want to press the minus button to subtract. And I'm going to take away half the health, which is 0 0.5. You can do whatever you want. 0 0.5 is what I'm going with. Join this green up to the player health. And then let's see what happens. So press compile. We're going to drag in our damage test. I'm going to make this bigger by pressing, oh, my bad. I'm going to make it bigger by pressing R. And we're going to make this much bigger. And W, let's bring it in. Let's press play. Let's go full screen. So F11 for full screen. You'll see our health's full there in the top left. Let's walk through the fire and look, half our health was taken away. Now the full health, all right? So that works. There is your functional health bar and you've created a, like a damage test, so how to damage the player. What I wanna do now for this video um, for this part anyway is press F11 again to go back into normal screen and we're going to create a health pickup Okay, it's basically the same logic that we did for the damage test only instead of sub subtracting We're going to add health instead of taking it away. So right click once again blueprint class another actor we will call this health underscore pickup Double click to open it up Press add, and we'll add a static mesh. Now, we'll just call this health P. Now, I don't have any models in here. I'm keeping it simple for the purpose of the video. I think maybe, you know, we'll find some meshes and we'll, we'll, we'll decorate the level at the end. But for now, to get it working, um, we will go static mesh. We'll select a doo -doo -doo cube. And I'm gonna make this smaller, so press R. And we'll just make that that small. Now, a lot of um, items in games, they spin around, they have lights on them. I'm gonna give this a rotating movement. It's very easy to do. Just go components, rotating movement, and it will spin in the game when we press play. But we also wanna add another box collision. Like so, press box. And we're gonna make that bigger as well. And just move it up a little okay so when we overlap with the box collision that's when the scripting comes into place so for the mesh I believe it's set to block all dynamic which means we can't run through it yes so we're going to change that to overlap all dynamic select our box collision again scroll down on component begin overlap and we're going to do basically what we did the last time only instead of subtract we're going to add so other actor cast a third person character like so we're going to get our health, get player health. And then we're going to set player health, like so. And then we're going to add, and we're gonna add 0 0.5. You can do what you want, I'm doing 0 0.5. You're gonna join this up. And then what I wanna do is once we select the health pickup, I want it to disappear. So drag off set player health and type in destroy actor. So easy. Okay, so basically look, once we overlap with the box, we want our player to
to get their health and we want to add the health to set the new health value and then we want the mesh to disappear okay so press compile and let's test it out so I'm gonna put that just a second let's just yeah that should be fine let's move it up a little I'll bring it over here we'll press play and we'll go full screen F11 and let's go through the fire we've lost our health see our cube it's spinning as well um, go through that and it should put our health back up to full again like so and that's it it's taking the health away that is it guys okay so that's part one of this video the next part will be animations we'll bring in a character we'll set up animation blueprints and sorry animation blend spaces and a blueprint and we'll set up a death animation as well so when the player's health reaches zero the player will die okay that's going to be uh, part two in this video um, tutorial series um, thank you very much for watching please go along with this you can change the speed if you need to slow it down if you have any questions drop a comment in the comment section I'd really really appreciate it I'm gonna start um, releasing a lot more videos please like and subscribe it really really helps me I'm taking the time to do this not just for my students for any game development enthusiast enthusiasts please get involved and good luck on your game dev journey take it easy